An entitled mother demands that I give my YouTube channel to her kid so he can upload on my channel. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell to turn on notifications. Before I start, I want to clarify this is not a plug for my YouTube channel. I won't be mentioning my YouTube name anywhere on here. This story is about my aunt who demanded that I let my cousin post his video on my channel. I'm 20 years old, living with my girlfriend, and I love to make videos for YouTube. I'm currently sitting at 830 subscribers and I've been working hard to make my videos good quality. I've always wanted a job as a YouTuber ever since I was 10 and for the first time in my life I'm starting to see that possibility of it coming true as I've been getting lots of active viewers and positive feedback. My mother liked that I was following my dream. I was showing her one time the analytics from my page which excited her because she works with analytics for a living. She was proud of me. However, she was so proud of me that she decided to tell other family members about it. I wasn't upset by that to be honest except my aunt married to my mom's brother and had a Karen vibe, felt like her son was YouTube worthy as well. My cousin, my aunt's son, was 10 years old and he loved YouTube as much as I did. He wanted to be a YouTuber as well and would make Minecraft videos in his bedroom as a small hobby. I guess one night my cousin was showing his mother one of his videos and was kind of upset that nobody was watching his videos on YouTube. So his mother, who had just found out about my YouTube channel, told him to message me and ask if he could upload his video onto my channel and that's what he did. I got a message from my cousin asking if I could upload his video to my channel and trying not to crush his dreams or hurt his feelings, I try to tell him that it doesn't seem like that's a great idea as it's my channel and I'm working hard to post decent content so I could gain more subscribers. He asked me to check out his video to see if it's good quality and because I want to be a good cousin, I decided to check it out. The video was of him playing Minecraft except his PC was a hand-me-down from our grandpa that might have been older than me, which meant the game was lagging terribly. Not to mention, he was recording the entire thing on his phone, propped up to stare at the monitor. Trying to be nice, I messaged him back that it's a great video and all, but I can't really post his video on my channel as I've explained before. He was a little disappointed, but he seemed to understand. He went home and briefly explained to his mother that I couldn't upload his video and she was furious. Later that night, I get a call from my aunt. This was basically our conversation. I said, Hi, Entitled Aunt. My aunt responded saying, Hi, I was wondering why your cousin can't upload his video to your channel. Well, as I told him, my channel is pretty small and I'm working hard to grow. And to do so, I need to upload my content. So when people watch my videos, they're likely to subscribe and such. My son said he showed you his video. Isn't that a good video to help you grow? Uh, I like the video, but it's not exactly my kind of video that I want for my channel. I only want to post the videos that I make. She cuts me off to say, I don't understand. He's your cousin. He wants to be like you and help you grow your channel. And you're telling me that he's not good enough? That's not what I'm saying. This is my channel and I've worked hard to get where I am. I don't want to risk losing subscribers if I post your son's videos. And why would you care more of what your fans think than spending time with your cousin? You need to post his video on your channel now. She said this believing she has any authority over me when I'm 20 years old and not living with my parents. It's not that, it's just I want to make YouTube my job. She starts laughing. <laughs> That cannot be a job. That's not possible. I then get into how YouTube works and how content creators can get paid and the way she was just breathing and responding with <sighs> uh -huh, uh -huh. sounded like she couldn't comprehend that YouTube was more than a jokish hobby. So if you have 800 subscribers, why would it matter since you're not getting paid yet? At this point, I was irritated and annoyed. Look, Entitled Ant, I have to go. I need to get dinner ready. Very well, but I'm going to be talking to your mother about this, and I don't think she'll be happy to know how rude you've been to your cousin. Okay, bye. And sure enough, she did end up calling my mother and telling her everything about what happened. My mother eventually called me and told me about their conversation. She tells me that my aunt was very disappointed in me and that I was being highly unfair to her son and that I should learn some respect for family. But my mom cut her off and told her that she was being incredibly rude for feeling entitled to my YouTube channel that I've been working hard on. Sure enough, my entitled aunt was shocked to hear that from her husband's sister and hung up. I don't know if I'll hear from my entitled aunt again, but I feel sorry for 
my cousin who seemed to understand the situation better than her and even messaged me and apologized for her behavior. So am I the jerk for putting my foot down? This is something that even in my own life, especially on my old channel, I really started to notice when you talk to people that aren't very familiar with YouTube. A lot of times people's first instinct is to put it down or try and belittle it in some way. And not the platform in general, but specifically your efforts. I think most of the time this is sort of a subconscious thing that people do, but sometimes it's not and it's actually meant to be vindictive like in this situation. But in this case, the entitled aunt here is a little conflicted because she wants to sort of put down what the OP is doing by saying if you only have 800 subscribers, but on the other hand, she can't completely put down his efforts because her son also wants to do that same thing. So she's living in this sort of contradiction and she's trying to find some sort of loophole to get what she wants by saying since you only have 800 subscribers, why does it matter since you're not getting paid? Not listening to the entire point of what he's trying to say, which is that he's trying to get there one day. She obviously disregards that and isn't taking it seriously. So this is the outcome to all of that. This type of mentality is actually a lot more common than you would expect. If you're somebody who watches YouTube all the time, you don't really interact with a ton of people that don't really know much about YouTube. But if you were in this situation, how would you have handled the situation and jerk or not a jerk and why? The girl I like hooked up with someone at a party. I am absolutely devastated. I got out of a toxic relationship in February. The entire relationship was quite volatile to say the least. During one of our fights, she started talking about how she had slept with one of her classmates before we officially became a couple. Her saying that hurt like hell and I said as much. She essentially just said that she was going to speak her mind and not avoid certain topics just because they hurt me. No wonder that relationship didn't work out. But this isn't really about her. A few months ago, I met a girl online and soon enough, we were on the phone for hours almost every day. I was falling hard for her. I was happy. I thought we were going somewhere with our burgeoning relationship, but then all of a sudden she gave me the it's not you, it's me speech. She said she still wanted to be friends. I said I was okay with that, but asked her to keep it friendly. Except then she kept being very much not friendly. She was the one who took things forward despite having said she didn't want to. Things kind of escalated from there and as of Thursday night, I genuinely believe that we were going to give this a shot despite the distance. Then she disappeared for 48 hours. Sometime after midnight between Saturday and Sunday, she suddenly texted me out of nowhere. She was at a party on E and sloshed out of her mind. My guts tied themselves in a knot because I knew where this was going. I tried to convince myself I was just being jealous and paranoid. I didn't hear anything else from her after that and I ended up knocking myself out with sleeping pills because my anxiety was through the roof. When I woke up, I had a text from her saying she felt like crap. I asked about her night and that was when she told me that she had slept with someone at the party. I would genuinely take being disemboweled with a chainsaw over experiencing that moment again. At first, I didn't know what to say. Then I congratulated her on it. Then I asked why she would even tell me that. She said she didn't mean to hurt me, but that it would be weird if she had to leave out details from her stories just to avoid hurting me. And that's when it hit me. It was the exact same situation with my ex last year, getting sloshed at a party, hooking up with some random guy, and then not giving a care about how it would affect me. Is it cheating? I suspect most people would say no, but it sure feels bad. But maybe I'm just a jerk for having the audacity to think that you don't do something like that to people that you claim to care deeply about. Or maybe you do, because that seems to be a recurring event in my relationships at this point. So, am I the jerk for my stance on this? Neither of these people seem to care or respect the OP at all. Despite whatever they say, they don't. You're not going to suddenly teach someone to be compassionate or somehow make them actually care about you. This is the behavior you should expect in the future if they've already done this to you in the beginning. And with that said, there really is no other outcome to this other than to just leave this relationship entirely. Don't even be friends. Just totally cut her out and move on. As painful as that is to do, it'll be a lot less painful than sticking around and having to deal with this for the rest of your life or the rest of your relationship until you end up breaking up with her inevitably. But let me know how you see this. Jerk or not a jerk and why? Am I the jerk for telling my housemates not to leave animal feces on the kitchen sink? The house I live in has a pig. My housemates put all the pig's poop on the kitchen sink and it goes down. So this is a bit of a wild one, but I've just had a pretty traumatic experience. Twas a sunny Friday morning. I just gotten home from a nine hour shift and was planning on filling my water bottle in the kitchen of my shared house as I had a fairly long journey home. To my unfortunate pleasant surprise, there was a dustpan full of pig poop sat right underneath the tap. I'm not even joking. It was literal pig poop. Now, it took me a good second or two to realize what it actually was. When I finally came to my senses, I nearly threw up. All I could 
could do was step outside. Thankfully, the back door was unlocked and I tried to calm down. After five minutes or so, I was finally able to go back inside the kitchen and sprint directly to my room. I then texted my housemates about this ordeal and fortunately, they text back almost immediately, apologizing about it and how they, quote, got distracted by the weather. They also said that although it was what they were used to doing, they'll try to stop placing the dustpan on the sink. Curious at this, I asked, would it not be the whole kitchen and all its counters? They said, no, we need a place to place it so we can open the door. That was their response to this. Appalled at this reply, I simply said that the kitchen is a shared space where food is prepared and feces is the worst thing to place there. The final reply that I haven't responded to, I'm that pissed off, was we don't mind it on the counter and we need somewhere to put it. If you have a problem with it on the counter, put it on the floor and put it back up whenever you're done. Now, I am beyond angry right now at this. I have quite a big paragraph ready to send, but I feel it would end my tenancy. I just want to know, am I the jerk? Somehow these roommates don't seem to understand that putting actual poop onto the kitchen counters would gross anyone else out who lives there who's trying to prepare food on those counters. They even said if you do move it onto the floor, just put it back on the counter when you're done. Even if the roommates are totally desensitized to having poop around their food and it doesn't gross them out for any reason, Reason, there's still the actual sanitary issue where people could get really sick. If poop particles start getting spread on the counter and then people roll their dough out on that counter with a rolling pin and all the residual poop particles are just rolled into that dough, that's not going to be good for you. I think in this case, the OP is just perplexed that they can't see how they are being the jerks in the situation so obviously, but let me know how you see this down below yourself. What would you do if you had roommates that were putting pig poop on the counter where you cook? Jerk or not a jerk and why? Am I the jerk for asking my friend to move a picture of him and his wife kissing to another room because it made my wife uncomfortable. I'm a 32 year old man and my wife Delilah is 28. We lost our apartment two months ago and moved in with my mom temporarily. Issues began to arise between Delilah and my mom and I had to ask my friend Anthony who's 31 to let us move in until I get enough money to rent out. His wife was away visiting family and he agreed but even there some issues started to arise. For your information Delilah is very shy around Anthony. She grew up in a conservative home, so it's understandable, but sometimes it can be a bit much, I admit that. For example, she freaked out when she accidentally drank from his glass, and she also once made a fuss when he passed by the guest rooms when she was lying down and the door was open. Thankfully, Anthony was super understanding and we were able to talk some of these issues out. Last night, Delilah was passing the hall and noticed a framed picture of Anthony and his wife kissing was hanging on the wall. She told me about it and said that it made her uncomfortable. Comfortable. She asked if I could speak to Anthony about it, but he didn't take it well. He gave me a look when I spoke to him and said this was bonkers because first of all, his wife put it there. And second of all, the picture holds sentimental meaning to him and his wife and argued that it wasn't some explicit picture of them, just a normal wedding kiss. We started arguing and he said that it wasn't like it was hanging on the living room wall or a perfectly lit room. I asked him just to be a little more considerate because it's not like I asked him to remove it completely. Just move it elsewhere elsewhere so that Delilah won't see it or keep it off the wall until we leave. He said that he was sorry but still refused. I explained how Delilah was feeling but he said again he was sorry but he would not move the picture. We argued for some more and he said that it's his house and that I was being pushy and kind of too comfortable to make such a demand and be pushy still. This morning Delilah refused to even come out of the room until the picture is removed. Anthony is refusing which makes it worse. Now I feel like I'm getting stuck between a rock and a hard place. Place. Yes, she might just be overreacting, but I feel like this isn't such a big ask for Anthony to decline and turn down. For what it's worth, if it were me, I'd go the extra mile to make sure my guests are comfortable. Anthony has been a friend of mine for 10 years. I wouldn't have asked to move in with him if I didn't have such a strong bond with him. He himself constantly talks about all the things and situations I helped him out with, and we are considered brothers. So, am I the jerk for asking my friend to move a picture of him and his wife kissing because it made my wife uncomfortable? It sounds like the OP has coddled his wife through their entire relationship. He's basically just treating her like a 
baby that needs to have her wants and desires met at every turn, no matter how seemingly trivial they are or how much they inconvenience the people that are doing them a favor. They lost their apartment two months ago, so presumably they're in a pretty bad spot. They already had an issue with the mom and now their friend is letting them live there for free because he says until he gets enough money to rent his own place out, so I'm assuming they're not paying Anthony. And then they're nitpicking the fact that Anthony has a wedding picture in his own house and they happen to be kissing in it. The OP here sounds like he's totally lost sight of reality because of how long he's been babying Delilah, which obviously makes him the jerk to his friend that is doing him a pretty big favor. But let me know how you see this down below, jerk or not a jerk and why. Am I the jerk for forcing my guests to move to a hotel after they've refused to use the bidet? Sorry for all the poop talk. I live in a country with terrible plumbing. If you flush toilet paper, you are pretty much guaranteed to back up your toilet. I grew up in Colorado, so I know how weird it is to wipe after a dump and then put the paper in a garbage can instead of just flushing it. So I installed a wand bidet in all three washrooms in my retirement house. So after you poop, you just spray your backside down nice and clean. Then you use a toilet paper to dry your butt. Nice, simple, and less gross in my opinion. I wish I had these when I lived in the States. So my brother and his wife came down for a visit. I told them the rules for the bathroom and they both said that they understood. Apparently not. They clogged the two public bathrooms the first day. Then they asked to use the one in my room. Nope, that's mine. They asked me where they were supposed to go to the bathroom. I pointed them to the clogged ones and offered them a plunger and a drain snake. They said I was the host and it was my responsibility. I laughed in their faces. So they packed up and left. They found a hotel and they are now on social media complaining about the crap hole country that I chose to retire to and calling me a terrible host for inviting them down but not letting them use my bathroom. I posted pictures of my bathroom after they clogged them and asked if they knew who did that to my home. They called me gross and immature for talking about their bathroom habits. I'm lost. They brought it up first. Anyways, they are calling me a jerk because they have to spend money on a hotel when I live in a really nice house with guest rooms. But now, everyone who knows the bathroom rules for down here is calling them idiots for not using the bidet or putting the toilet paper in the receptacle. So, am I the jerk? The OP clearly warned them about how bad the plumbing was there and what they had to do in order to make this not happen, but they decided to do it anyway. To not just one bathroom, but two out of the three bathrooms in the house, and then they wanted to do it to the third. The funny part is that they said that the OP was the host and it was the OP's responsibility, which in a way, he did do his responsibility. He told them what the issue was and how to avoid it. How much more responsibility can he take? Does he want them to wash their butts for them? So let me know how you would have handled this down below and jerk or not a jerk and why. Am I the jerk for embarrassing my little brother with my Halloween costume? My brother is 18 and I'm a 21 year old female. We go to the same university. I play soccer and my teammates nickname me Dump Truck Danny because I have gained a bit of weight on a specific area of my body. I thought the nickname was harmless and funny and no one on campus really made it weird. For Halloween, I decided to play up the nickname and I was a dump truck for Halloween. I even put an oversized load sign on my back. I told my brother what I was going to be and he said he would never talk to me again if I went through with the costume because it would embarrass him. I didn't think he was serious and I went through with it anyway. Now he's actually not talking to me and a lot of my family is saying that I shouldn't have worn that costume. I'm honestly not sure if I should apologize or not. Am I the jerk? I don't think anyone really wants to hear that part of their family members lives but the OP here obviously saw it more as just an innocent, innocuous type of thing. It seems like by far most people think that the brother is the jerk, but let me know what you think down below. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories in this series, use the playlist at the top of the description. And next time you live stream, use the cream of the crop music. Search for cream of the stream on Spotify or whatever music platform you use for copyright free music to use for your stream. It's free. Cream of the stream. Either way, thanks a lot for listening. We'll see you guys next time.